appreciate the sacrifices that Mary Magdalene made in order to follow Jesus. And lastly, we should embrace a lifestyle of wholehearted discipleship. Oh, continue, Mr. Staple. Okay. We want you want to do a devotional reading. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Sister Staple. Thank you. I'm <laughs> Uh, hold on, Brother Hines. Yes, sir, Mr. Hines. Are we going to have prayer? Okay, hold on, Mr. Hines. Thank you. Uh, Christopher, <laughs> Bell, would you go ahead and uh, do devotion reading? Do you have the, your Bible ready, Ms. Christopher? Um, I do not. Can you tell me uh, what's the devotional reading? Because right, my list didn't get attached. Roman, the fourth chapter. 13 through 25. Roman the 14th chapter, 13 through 25. Okay. Um, and as we get through, after she read the uh, divorce and reading, Deacon High, you do the prayer, please. You said yeah. Romans the 14th chapter, what verse again? I'm sorry, the fourth chapter, 13 through 25. Romans 4, 13 through 25. Okay. Romans 4. 13 through 25. Okay. Um, okay, I'll be um, reading out of the NIV version. Okay. Romans, the 14th chapter, 13 through 25. The fourth chapter. Yep, excuse me. Romans, the fourth chapter, 13 through 25, correct? Yes, correct. Okay, it was not through the law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be heir of the world, but through the righteousness that comes by faith. For if those who depend on the law are heirs, faith means nothing and the promise is worthless because the law brings wrath. And where there is no law, there is no transgression. Okay. Therefore, the promise comes by faith so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who have the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, the God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. Against all hope, Abraham in hope, believed and so because the father of many nations mm -hmm. just as just as it had been said to him okay. so shall your offspring be without weakening in his faith he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old and that sarah's room was also dead mm -hmm. yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of god but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to god being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The words it was credited to him were written not for him alone, but also for us to whom God will give, will credit righteousness. Mm -hmm. For us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. Amen. Amen. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Okay. Thank you, Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning mm -hmm. in the humblest that we know how. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your grace and thanking you, Father, for your mercy. You. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you be in the midst of this Sunday school this morning. Yes. Heavenly Father, we ask that you make everything okay. Because we know when you are in the presence, then everything will be all right. We just want to say thank you, Father. Thank Father, you. we ask you right now to strengthen us where we are weak, build us up where we are torn down. We ask you to prop us up on every leaning side. And Father, we thank you for being our Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. We thank you for being God all by yourself. All right. We realize, Heavenly Father, without you, we are nothing. Mm. And without us, you are still God. Oh, and again, Father, we put you in the face. And then, Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. who died every cross 
for all of our sins. And Father, we ask you right now to heal the sick and afflicted, the sick and the shed in all over the land. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to just be with us. Bless us, Father. And then, Father, all bereaved families, we just ask you to put your loving arms around them. Let us know that you are still God mm-hmm. and that you are all by yourself. Amen. Father. And, Father, I just want to ask you to let all of us come together. Let us not turn our backs on each other because, Father, we see what's going on in the White House. Father, we just ask you to let all of us stick together. Let us stay on one accord, Father, because we are living in perilous times, Father. And, Father, we just ask you to just bless this nation, bless our homes, bless our churches, bless our pastors, bless our congregations, Father. And, Father, we ask you to bless our president. Mm -hmm. Bless him in a special way, Father. Let him make the right decisions for our country. And, Father, we ask you to bless this pandemic. Father, we ask you to find a cure for it in the name of Jesus, Father. And then, Father, when this world down here can no longer afford us a home, we know that you have all power. And, Father, we just ask that you just bless all of us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Christopher, for the scripture. Thank you, Deacon Hine, for leading us in prayer. So today we're going to go back to you now. And uh, we're going to start with introductions. Okay. Um, our introduction. Um, today we hear of many organizations and businesses inviting existing and prospective customers to join their loyalty program. These program advertise points, free miles, and other perks in effort to build and retain their customer base. Loyalty is the expression of consistent support of our allegiance. Synonyms of the word include constant, dedicated, faithful, dependable, and steadfast. Loyalty is a priority in every institution, government, business, community organization, school, friendship circles, churches, and families. Humans can be fickle, sometimes easily allowing their loyalty to be swayed by a great sale. That's right. Lively words, the promises of promotion or personal convenience. Many people suffer from a microwave mentality. Mm -hmm. meaning that they want things quickly with no waiting. Patience is often in short supply, and many are not willing to pay the price that real loyalty often requires. Mm -hmm. The modern tendency to embrace an utterly self-centered when, where, and how I want it mindset has caused many institutions to falter or fail completely, Mm -hmm. to be lasting, Loyalty must have a firm basis. Mm. The basis must be commitment or love. And you can find that in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Mm -hmm. Loyalty involves devotion rather than a self-serving, convenient love, or one that fades when the sale or other benefits ends. God calls us to sincere love and loyalty to church organizations, to church organizations and others that inspire us to patiently forgive others with their flaws and to support and promote their best interests. The true, pre- the true premise of loyalty is unfaltering commitment. Amen. And I'm, I'm gonna try not to do too much talking this morning. I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to hold myself back a little bit. But I want to mention this thing before I turn over to Sister Safer is that uh, getting back to a friend uh, concerning the loyalty, I'm 
I'm trying to got somebody got a lot of background noise about to get into talk and kind of have a meet them for a while. There we go. Uh dealing with loyalty. Now let's look at friends. Mm -hmm. Do we have do we have any loyalty a loyalty towards friends? Anybody that's loyal to us? Do we have that kind of true, true friend? I'm trying to say, do we have true friends? Very seldom. Now, if you ever want to see a true friend, when you get into some difficult time, exactly, that person that is true to you, that is loyal to you, will stand with you. That's right. That that person that if if they're your true friend, they loyal to you, they will not allow others to talk about you in their presence. It Amen. Y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. Hear you. They will not allow. Mm -hmm. Now, I have seen this, and I'm going to let go. I've seen this now, that some want to be with you, and then if a certain person shows up, they will go along with that person. They will turn, <laughs> they will turn their back on you mm -hmm. because of that other person. That's not true loyalty. Mm -hmm. True loyalty and I got to repeat this. True loyalty was yesterday. <laughs> good, good or bad. That was true loyalty. I don't care how how much ever this was displayed. Well, nothing gonna change their mind. Mm -hmm. That it was loyalty, but it was, it was loyalty in the in an evil way. Mm -hmm. But think about we had that loyalty in a righteous way, how what shape this world would be in. Go okay, that is so true. And, uh, you know, that's loyalty and the lesson introduction, it really speaks of that loyalty in government and whatever we are in, not only with our friends, but we should be loyal to whatever we are in or who uh, we are in contact with. Yeah. And a lot of times, you know, but the main loyalty and we're going to get on with that. We should be loyal to Jesus Christ. That's you know? right. That's right. Uh, we're not loyal, loyal to him. We are, you know, come in and come out and, you know, love him today. And tomorrow we don't think about him. And, you know, loyalty is very important because it's something that's constant, as the lesson has said, some synonyms for it. We have to be dedicated to whatever we believe in. We can't uh, be in and out and just because somebody else come up with a new whatever, then we forget about whatever we've been uh, loyal to for the last week or so mm -hmm. and just stop and go on to this, you know, certain thing. Mm -hmm. And um, we got to be uh, dependable, steadfast, and uh, all of that because it's a priority. I don't care whatever we're in, whatever we're in or uh, who we're with, we should be loyal in our relationships. Even in our uh, family, we should be loyal. You know, sometimes we, <laughs> even with today, it's supposed to be, and it is Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. We have to be uh, loyal to our uh, partner. Mm -hmm. And we don't uh, do that. And uh, we so fickle as the lesson pointed out. We fickle in our churches. We'll start out, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Then the next thing we know, we don't fail by the wayside. So mm -hmm. we should continue to be loyal into whatever we do. And I always say, this is, this is my motto. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times we can get into so much and want to be involved in so many different things. That's right. You're yeah. not loyal in nothing. That's and it. If I can't just be in but one you know, dedicated to one thing. I want to be loyal in that one particular thing, okay. you know? And I'm just going to do just like, I'm going to use this hand so everybody can understand. Okay. For instance, with the Sunday school uh, lesson in the morning time, mm -hmm. I, it's a commitment to me to be, I don't want to just come in once a month or once every two months and be in Sunday school. Mm -hmm. I am dedicated to That's being right. here in That's Sunday right. school, on Sunday school. And whatever you be in, I don't care what I'm doing. If I want to sleep late, I'm going to make sure I'm going to get up. Mm -hmm. Because, see, I'm, I'm loyal to that. 
And a lot of people, it don't, well, it don't matter, you know. I just lay here and wash it and do this and that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it, it doesn't matter. Even if it's a weekly meeting that I know I'm involved in, mm -hmm. I want to be loyal to that. That's right. So that's what we got to practice. Same way that these women was loyal to Jesus Christ, we got to show them to be loyal too. All right. Sister Mary. Loyalty does not mean convenient. That's right. <laughs> exactly. If it's convenient to you, then you got to think about your loyalty. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's true. Because just like Susan Staples, she, she was saying it, but she just didn't use the word convenient. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And the word convenient came to my mind. Okay. The word okay. easy came to my mind. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to be loyal. It's not. It's not convenient to be loyal. Mm -hmm. You sacrifice. It's right. Mm -hmm. Are the kinds of words you use when you're talking about loyalty. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's going to cost you something. Right. It's going to cost something. Exactly. You know, and most people are not willing to pay the price. To pay the price. <laughs> now I'm going to say this and I'm going to be quiet. We don't understand what price Christ paid Jesus. to love us. Mm -hmm. Amen. We don't understand how he really and truly suffered and died Amen. for Amen. us to have eternal life. Mm -hmm. Amen. If we had one clue then we would understand what the word loyalty really means. Amen. That is so true. Let me share this with you and then we're going to move on. And while I'm sharing this now, uh, Sister, I believe it's Sister Anna Lee, if you would go ahead and unmute yourself, Sister Anna Lee, while I'm talking. Uh, that was a story about a chicken and a pig. <laughs> they had a conversation about giving and it, uh, the chicken said, I'm going to give a contribution, and that's the egg. Mm. And the pig and the pig said, that's easy for you to say. If I have to give up anything, it got to be a sacrifice. That's right. And the reason why I, I want to tell that was because <laughs> whole lot of us think that law is based on sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And like y'all said, it's not based on convenience. That's right. Exactly. Uh, it's sometimes... Uh, like Sunday school, so stay talking about Sunday school, but you know, every Sunday, it, 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 it's, it's, some, it's not convenient for it. If it's sometimes called her to pass, be sacrificed. Cause exactly. Because she won't stay, sometimes she might want to stay in the bed and sleep. Really. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but she said, well, I'm going to get up and get on Sunday, Sunday school. Mm -hmm. How many more would think like that in, in the church world? How bad would we be? Mm -hmm. Okay, anyone else? Anyone else? I, uh, sister, uh, Mary, I want you to go ahead to make part a narrative of the biblical text, please. Okay. My computer shut down, so we're on, um, on page 63. Yes, ma'am. Right, okay, okay. I just want to make sure. Mm -hmm. A working disciple, Luke 8 1 through 3. Mark 15 and 40. I'm going to read uh, the NIV version, but I'm going to flip back to a word or two in the King James version. Okay, okay. After this, Jesus traveled mm -hmm. about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The 12 were with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and disease. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven devils had come out. Amen. Joanna, the wife of Koza, the manager of Harold's household, Suzanne, and many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. I want to read that again. Okay, okay. These women were helping to support them, the disciples, 
out of their own means. Mm -hmm. Now, Mark 15 and 40 says, mm -hmm. some women were watching from a distance. Among mm -hmm. them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, the younger of the, the younger and of Joseph and Salome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. According to Luke 7, 36 through 50, because see Luke 8 starts off after this. After so you, this. Need to, you need to go back to see what he was doing mm -hmm. in order for them to say after this. After this. And Luke 7, 36 through 50 said Jesus was anointed by a woman who others regarded as sinful. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't, don't think about what others say. The others thought she was sinful. Mm -hmm. In the dialogue, Jesus forgave. Well, I guess I'm gone again. Wait a minute, y'all. You still on? Emma? You still on? Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't see myself. I don't see nothing. Uh-oh. You <laughs> on the... Ah, you know, I am okay. Good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on then. Go on, go on. I see. Je Jesus forgave the women. Okay, in the dialogue, Jesus forgave the women of their sins, which prompted the Pharisees in the room to question his authority to forgive sin. Mm -hmm. After this, Jesus with his disciples traveled the ridge and preaching. The good news of the kingdom of God, Luke 8 and 1. One may gather from Jesus' interaction with people and the content of the Sermon of the, on the Mount that Jesus frequently preached love, forgiveness, healing, wholeness, and relationship with God the Father. That's in Matthew 5 through 7. Mm -hmm. Besides the 12, mm -hmm. there were a group of other disciples. Now they didn't call them disciples. They said <laughs> other disciples, including Mary Magdalene, who had been delivered from demons mm -hmm. and infirmities, who, according to Luke, are Joanne, the manager of Harold's household, which is evident of Jesus' impact in the community, in, in the local community, Suzanne and others, that's in Luke 8 and 3. As Jesus moved from town to town with disciples, Mark, let's see, Mark 15 to 40, noted that there were other women with Mary Magdalene who watched from a distance. All right. mm -hmm. Notably, notably, Mary, the mother of James, and the woman called Salome. The watching from a distance connected with the belongings to support them. Jesus, them was Jesus and the disciples of Luke 8, 3b. The women were faithfully present at the, config, at the crucifixion of Jesus as he suffered and died at Calvary. While many women of the gospels were unnamed, these disciples of Jesus were named, mm -hmm. indicating their level of, of status and significance. By connecting, by connecting them to their husbands, work role, and other identified markers. Mm -hmm. Among the other gospel writers, mm -hmm. Luke is very careful to mention that these women were workers within the ministry and added necessary support to meet the needs by supplying whatever they could mm -hmm. from their own resources. Sister, sister uh, maybe before you explain that, I'm, to, I'm trying to get Miss Anna Lee. Miss Anna Lee, if you would just go out, Miss Anna Lee, and come back in. Sister Anna Lee here, go out and come back in, please. I got uh, to go out too, I think. Can y'all still see me? I, we still see yeah. you. You fine. You fine. You oh, go. okay. Okay. So you, you can go ahead, Miss Mary. Okay. Now, what I want to emphasize is that loyalty does not depend on sexuality okay okay you don't have to be a certain age you don't have to be a certain sex mm -hmm. 
you don't have to be a certain degree of of uh, status. All right. You just need to be totally committed. Committed. Mm -hmm. totally, totally committed to be loyal. The example they gave that so beautifully states what I'm trying to get across okay. is that these women, they were named, first of all. Mm -hmm. There mm -hmm. was others that they did not name in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what they did, they supported them mm -hmm. out of their own means. That's right. That's what we're saying. They supported the disciples. Mm -hmm. Why did they support them? They were there. All right. Doing the crucifixion. Mm -hmm. They were, Jesus had done something for them mm -hmm. individually mm -hmm. as well as collectively. Mm -hmm. Individually, he had taken the sins of Mary Magdalene out of her. That's right. He had saved those other women. Collectively, they had they had seen, if I'm I'm, I'm probably using English wrong. They All saw right. Jesus <laughs> die on the cross. All right. These women were the oh, I don't want to get too 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 far in it. <laughs> women. I'm just going to say it, was the first people who went to the tomb. Yes, all right, all right. Not the disciples now. The disciples went on back fishing. Mm. But women plays an important role in spreading the gospel. Amen. Support, supporting mm -hmm. the gospel. Mm -hmm. Being mm -hmm. spread. That's right, that's right. They didn't call them no, what I said, disciplets. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes we say uh, deaconess. Yes. Deacons. yes. <laughs> the word of God says they were disciples. Mm -hmm. Okay. They were disciples because of their own, that their support to the disciples. Amen. Of their own means. Mm-hmm. What they had to give, they gave it. Amen. Amen. And, and that is so true. Now, Mary Magdalene was showed loyalty to Jesus. Amen. Now, the question here, and you have really uh, said it, Miss Mary, the question here, why did she show loyalty to Jesus? Now, when we show loyalty to, to an organization, uh, individual or whatever it might be, that is a reason. Mm -hmm. It could be out of love, out of some kind of great concern or uh, something. The reason why we show loyalty. Now, why did Mary Magdalene show loyalty to Jesus? Can about just, just kind of just talk about that a little bit? Why, why, why did she show loyalty? If I show loyalty to See anything, that? th that's a reason why I'm doing it. I'll be honest with you, that's a reason. I'm doing it. Go ahead. Okay. Love. Love. Okay, love. She loves him. She, she, mm -hmm. of, of love. And, and, and as Mary said, she, he cast out seven devils, seven demons, that's whatever, right. back, out of her. You know, think about it. Mm -hmm. if, if you carry around all them evil spirits, and you meet a man that can deliver you from all that mess inside Lord, you, you ought to be willing to show some loyalty toward that individual. Amen. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. A anyone else on that? Anyone else? Thank you, Miss Mary. Brother Hyde, you want thing you want to add to that? Well, uh, you answered what I was going to say about him casting the, the demons from Mary, Mary Madeline. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I was going to say when you say, why did she do the things she did? Why did she follow him and stuff? Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's right. So let, let me ask you uh, uh, a personal question now. 
Now we look at Mary Magdalene and show her loyalty. Why should we show loyalty to Jesus Christ? <laughs> Let's ask that. Why should we show loyalty? Because Jesus died for our sins. Okay. He he created where we could live and have eternal life. Okay. Okay. Any anyone else? Add on to that. Good. He's and you know, he Good. can bear people can do. Uh, we know that you know Jesus uh, cast the demons out of uh, the lady, but. Uh -huh. People can do so much for you. Uh -huh. They can give you the uh, shirt off their back. Uh -huh. They can be with you through thick and thin. They will stand with you when okay. no one else will stand with you. And we still won't show loyalty to that, those people. Amen. Oh, yeah. We have a problem with that. We don't be loyal to people. Mm. That's right. Mm. That's right. No matter what they do for us. And you know, when, when Jesus saved each one of us. That's right. Yes. When we allowed him to come into our hearts, mm -hmm. our mind, and we studied the word, and we try our best to live by the word, mm -hmm. that is another reason we should be loyal to him. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We know this earth is not our home. Amen. We are going to live forever somewhere. Mm -hmm. And we striving to get to that to that place, we need to be loyal to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Jesus. because, because oh, amen. Amen. He has done so much for us. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, each one of us, mm -hmm. He has done something for yes, Lord. Each one of us, right. yes, yeah. mm -hmm. individually and collectively individually let me tell y'all he woke us up this morning thank you lord collectively mm -hmm. we can mm -hmm. see we can hear yes he has given us so much so we we should be loyal to him and only him that's right mm -hmm. but we should be loyal to each other as well that's right that's yeah. okay yeah we mm -hmm. should be loyal mm -hmm. because he told us mm -hmm. to love ye one another. That's my mm -hmm. greatest mm -hmm. commandment. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to say this. Going back to what Sister Staples was saying, I don't care what you do for people and stuff, they'll still turn their back on you. They won't be loyal to you. That's because true. a lot of people still have those devils and demons inside of them. Amen. And if you, I don't care what you do, and then somebody will still say, just because he did so and so or she did so and so to me, I'm not finna kiss they behind. <laughs> you see, that's where they come in with this not being lawyer to this is where they come in not caring for what you do for them. Anyone else? You know, if God don't do another thing for me, he done enough. That's right. Mm -hmm. God have mercy. He done enough. But I know he can do more. But if he don't want to do anything for me, he done done enough. Mm -hmm. sure. I trust him. Yes. That, I and trust I'm, him. And I'm going to remain loyal to him. Yes. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. I trust him. Amen. You're exactly right. Anyone else? All right. And just like they'll say, I got Jesus and that's enough. Mm -hmm. I don't need nothing else. No. I got Jesus and that's enough. All right. Anyone else? Crystal, would, uh, Crystal, would you like to read for me, Nate? Um, what do you think? Let's see. Let me page 64. Okay. Uh, we are often tempted to give great honor to frontline or visible roles in ministry. Explain the importance of the ministry that Mary Magdalene and other women fulfilled for Jesus. A weeping disciple. 
Mm-hmm. John 20, 10 through 13. I'll read the NIV. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the womb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting where Jesus' body had been, and one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. The disciples returned home, verse 10, not understanding what had occurred after Mary had visited the tomb and found it empty, verse 9. At least two two of the disciples had run to the tomb and confirmed that it was empty. When they left, Mary remained at the tomb and stood outside of it, weeping, verse 11. A, while she was overcome with grief and still weeping, she stooped down and looked again into the tomb, verse 11b. As she looked, she saw two angels in white apparel. Mm-hmm. Let's see. In white apparel. I'm sorry, I'm losing my place. Sitting where Jesus had been laid. Mm-hmm. One at the head and one at the feet, verse 12. Seeing her tears, the angels asked, why are you crying? Verse 13a, NIV. Mary replied that someone had taken had taken um, away, implying stolen, the body of Jesus, whom she called Lord. She had no idea where to find it. Jesus' tomb was ve- was a very small room carved in limestone hillside. The cave-like room probably had several beds or shelves on which to lay other deceased bodies. Each tomb had a separate stone specifically um, designed to fit at the entrance to close the tomb also known as a sepulcher the text does not indicate that peter and john saw the angels that spoke to mary it seems that the angels appear only for mary's benefit who was in such a state of grief and was weeping so profusely that she did not recognize the peculiarity of their presence it is possible that the angels appeared as human strangers as mary continued to speak with them without any apparent awe or surprise Amen. Uh, for, before, before you begin to, to, to elaborate on that, let, let me let me say this on. I, I see uh, some stuff online, and I want to say this here, and this is so true. It said because you don't agree with you on everything, does not mean that you are not loyal. That's right. True. That's I like that. True. That's, true. That's true. Let, let me put my myself in that position, mm-hmm. Sister Mary. If I'm wrong, you don't fall. You don't fall to agree with me. That's that's not loyalty. Not loyalty. I'm wrong, and you agreeing with me. You ain't really showing me loyalty. That's you really, right. you really <laughs> hurting me. Really. That's it. That's it. And sometimes people don't understand between loyalty and wrong and right. That's right. True loyalty also is telling me. Showing me when I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. I'm fool, y'all. Let me get along. Thank you, Deacon. Thank you, Deacon. Go ahead. Can Sister. I say something? Can I Go say ahead. one thing? Go ahead. <laughs> and when you tell that person, uh, it's how you tell that person. That's too. right. You know, each of us have our individual personality. Mm-hmm. Sister Geraldine may be your sister, but you all are still two individuals. That's right. That's right. I should love. I should love both of you all the same. And if if I tell Sister Geraldine something, I should tell her one way. If I if I know it's gonna hurt her, or if I know she, I sh- I should try to tell her in a different way than I would tell you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. You understand okay. what I'm saying? I understand. The Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you. Mm-hmm. To say no, don't don't. In other words, I make and tell Mr. Mac mm-hmm. I hear in public in in uh, Facebook land, uh-huh. whatever. But if I sh- I should not, I may not can do Geraldine the same way. I may <laughs> need to do, do Geraldine. Call her on the phone. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And say, Miss right. Geraldine, I need to tell you something. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, get me right now. You said such and such, and that's not right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's between she and I. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Some people you can tell one way, others you can't. Mm-hmm. And you need to have that discerning spirit. Now that's true. Amen. That's true. 
And I, I thank for, I thank, I thank people. As old you get, old you get. I thank people for telling me when I'm wrong. Mm hmm You know. And not saying, uh, well, you done done wrong too. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we want, we want. <laughs> You exactly right. What we do something like that? Are you you ain't you ain't no better. You do wrong too. See, see, we get it ain't about that. It's, I'm just trying to. I'm showing you our love. Uh, in other words, keep making a fool out yourself. That's the main thing. Keep making a fool out yourself. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, cross. <laughs> um, this passage is pretty self-explanatory. Pretty much what it's saying is that um. Mary goes back to the, well, she's at the tomb and she finds it empty. Um, and this is just something I kind of just, I'm not sure. This I don't know if this is just revelation or just something I thought about. It makes me wonder if, of course, Jesus had already, in prior texts, I remember reading where Jesus had already told them what was going to happen when he was going to get crucified, when he raised from the dead. And I think, of course, the reason why Mary was at the tomb and she did not she kept looking in it because she i think in the back of her mind she knew that the prophecy had been fulfilled mm -hmm. but you had to see it for herself so to speak because that's the carnal side of us you know we see when we see empty tombs the first thing we think was what happened to the body somebody took the body but um i think because of her belief the angels were able to come to her and tell her that you know no one had stolen the body you know god had indeed i don't know was raised from the dead so mm -hmm. amen and one thing you gotta realize, it was a borrowed tomb. Yeah. And if you borrow it from, you, you don't, don't return. It's mm -hmm. It wasn't permanent, it was borrowed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank God it was borrowed, y'all. Amen. 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 Anyone else? No. And you know, uh, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. She saw a miracle. Okay. Right for her own eyes. And you know, sometimes we can be so focused on despair that we miss the miracle. That's but right. But she, she saw that miracle right before her own eyes. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, Sister Annalie, I'm glad you got on mute. I want you to go ahead and read the next for me, Sister Annalie. Uh, what do you think? Is it possible to be? So distracted by paying for a ugly motion that you miss a significant parents, possibly an angel of God. Some angels appear to us as strangers. See Hebrews 13 and 2. A witness, witness in the size of John 20, 14 through 18. And I'm going to read this. And I'll be read. Okay. At this time, I saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Mm. Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, where, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned towards him and cried out in our mat. Rabbi, Rabbi, mm -hmm. which means Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and pay them. I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said things, these things to her. Immediately after Mary tells the angel the reason for her distraught weeping, and she turned her face on the stuff, she turned she saw a man, but did not realize who it was actually Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mary yeah. was in deep, the deepest sorrow that she did not recognize the angel in the tomb. No, Jesus outside the tomb. Jesus asked Mary why she was crying and for whom was she looking. Jesus knew the answer, but likely wanted to ease into the conversation by first acknowledging Mary's pain and grief. Her response to Jesus' question the one of hope for this class, thinking he was the gardener. Mary asked Jesus to tell her where he placed the body, if he had taken it away. Mm -hmm. So desperate to find her missing Lord, Mary was even willing to go and get Jesus' body herself. Mm -hmm. She was to call Mary by her name. As Jesus spoke her name, Mary was able to see him clearly. 
Mm. He cried out to him, calling him Rabon, meaning master or teacher, with excitement and joy. Apparently, Mary moved to embrace Jesus, but he told her not to hold him, for he had not ascended to the Father. That's right. There are many interpretations of this passion. The most likely explanation is much simpler and quite possible to more accurate interpretation. That Jesus asked her not to cling to him, in the sense of not letting go of him. Jesus immediately directed Mary to go and tell the disciples that he was he is ascending and about to ascend to the Father. He is and thou God. Despite the emotional and unhorrible she had encountered, Mary immediately left the shaft with the disciples her personal encounter with the risen Savior. And that is Luke verse eighteen. Amen. Sister Hill, you'd like to explain some of that? Oh, Let me see here. It said the witnesses, witness and disciples. The mayor, Magdalene was still hanging around. She didn't leave. And that was other women that stood, you know, afar off. That's right. That's right. And, uh, you know, it, but she was more up front. But uh, you don't have to be up front to the stage all the time to support the cause. Okay. Uh, okay. You're talking. Okay. Uh, Less visible means that mean you're just as important as the one that's up front. But Mary Madeline was up front because she was so devoted to our Lord and Savior. She really had that unfaltering commitment to the Lord, and that's what we all should have. Mm-hmm. But after the crucifixion, the, the, uh, all the disciples went to their own places in seclusion. Mm-hmm. But Mary and other women, they remained at the burial site, hoping for some clue or answer uh, processing her grief over the death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and, and she was asking questions she wanted to know even when Jesus spoke to her she didn't recognize his voice she was so emotional she was so distraught but she, she had seen these angels but they didn't see the angels when they first looked in the tomb but when she looked in there again it was two angels there so we know that angels do appear and we know that angels are real. And uh, Mary wanted to know where, where, where Jesus was. She wanted to. She even said she would take his body herself. But uh, when she uh, she was overcome with grief, and 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 she, you know, when you are when you are in a state like that, you can't even think straight. That's right. Have you all been told, wound up, and, and things hurt you so bad you can't even remember? What you really see or what you really say. Mm-hmm. So Mary was just in that in just in that seat herself. She didn't know what to do or what to say, but she knows she wanted to find Jesus and, and uh, anoint his body. So Amen. Amen. this was a clue for all of us. We all should be devoted to our Lord and Savior. We all should be committed to him. And you when see, we say we're gonna do something, make sure we do it. Don't just tap hazard and say something and go on about your business and forget about it. We mm-hmm. got to be, if you're going to be committed, be committed. You can't be half committed. You got to be totally committed. Amen. If you want to be Jesus. So we need to put our walking shoes on and do what we know we need to do without grumbling and complaining and just do it. Mm-hmm. Amen. Uh, May I say something? Yes, sir. <clears throat> I'm going to ask the question, then I'm going to try my best to answer this. Oh, you want to ask yourself a question and you want to ask it? Okay, go ahead. (laughs) Okay. Why why Jesus did not want her to touch him? Because he had transformed from human back to a spirit. And he was not in the flesh anymore. He had resurrected and he hadn't descended back to the father, so he didn't want to to touch him. Am I right? I, he, he said what he said, a deacon. He said that before you touch me, I have not this ascended yet. And so right. don't touch me. In other words, make it pale for you for you. Don't touch me now, because I'm not ready for you to touch me. But I'll while you can touch, but not right now. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what I'm, what I'm saying is. God have not ascended yet at the time mm-hmm. of that conversation. Mm-hmm. 
All right. Uh, did I ask your question, uh, Deacon? Well, let me ask this. When he died and they put him in the tomb, when he was raised from the dead, he was no longer uh, in the flesh anymore, right? I, you, you just hold that okay. thought. Ho hold that thought. We're, we're going to move on. We'll come back later on. Let hold that thought right there. Uh, okay. Let, let us continue on. Uh, anybody anybody want to say anything on that before we move on? Got a question? Yes, ma'am. You know, when I was still studying this lesson, Mary didn't recognize Jesus. Okay. I guess I don't. I, don't, I really don't have a question. I I wanted to say this. Okay. They they beat Jesus to a pulp, y'all. Mm. Mm -hmm. We mm. cannot imagine. How, uh, I don't know if anybody's had had gone to a funeral where they couldn't open the casket, where they said they didn't favor themselves. That's right. Isaiah 52, 14, talks about how Jesus, he prophesied how they would whip him where they would, he would not be even recognizable. Mm -hmm. That's why I said we don't understand. That's right. What God has done for us. Yes, yes. They beat him. Beat him. Until Mary Magdalene didn't even recognize him and he was standing right there by her. If that ain't a reason to shout this morning, I don't know. Because he is, he, I'm telling you now. Glory. Jesus was Jesus was human and divine and That's divine. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. But humanly, he did so much for us that we can't even comprehend how much he suffered mm -hmm. so that we could have eternal life. Could nobody else do it mm -hmm. but him? But we, I know, uh, but remember now, I know he's divine, but he was as much human as you and I. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Mary Magdalene, she after seeing him being whooped on that cross, she still didn't recognize him. Mm. And, and I, I got to think about that thing. And, and, and why we all just be able to shout this morning, if and you said that he was beat in the yep. condition, we ought to shout because of that beat he got. Yes. Mm -hmm. but, and more, more, more than that, we should shout because the beating he got was because of your sins and my sins. That's, that's it. That's it. That was the reason why he got beat. He, he, he loved us so much. Cause y'all, he, he was divine and we're the human. So that divine part let me know that if he, if he wanted to call down some angels, he could have. He yes, could he, have, but he, mm -hmm. he did. <laughs> I'll do with that. Go anybody else. Anybody else want that? Good lesson. Okay. Amen. And uh, you know, Mary, did, yeah. Mary uh, Magdalene, she didn't realize what an honor it was for her to be the first one mm -hmm. to uh, witness the uh, resurrection. That's it. Mm -hmm. Amen. She didn't realize, yeah. and uh, she was so committed, so loyal that she didn't stop searching for him. That's it. And, uh, that's what you know, loyalty and commitment is all about. And uh, she had that privilege of being able to tell others that Jesus was alive and well. Amen. Amen. We find him, and we find him for ourselves. We should, you know, it. like Mary did, just tell everybody that we know that Jesus is alive and well because it's an honor just to know who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. Right. And one more thing, I'm, I'm, I'm being transparent. That's all right. Go ahead. She couldn't lift it in his body. Yeah. <laughs> she couldn't. She could not have lifted his body. That's right. If mm -hmm. if he was if they had if somebody now this didn't happen but if mm -hmm. somebody had moved him and showed her where he was she yeah. was willing to do anything to get her savior's body. 
Glory. Anointed with all and spices or whatever she had to do to it, she was gonna do it by herself. Yes. Now that's a woman now. Yes, a committed woman. That's a committed woman. That's a lawyer woman. Yes, that's a disciple. I'm gonna ask y'all something now, since y'all talking about commitment. I'm gonna ask you a question. Do y'all feel in local, just local now, churches, do y'all think the women are more committed than men? Absolutely. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. And being a man, you are correctly, you are definitely correct. Mm -hmm. You can see in local churches mm -hmm. how many men <laughs> just go that attend. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And some of them don't. And, and I'm going to tell you this too. You got to be committed to Jesus, not, not, not because granddaddy or grandmama. See, we, mm -hmm. we are, don't be committed because the granddaddy laid is in that cornerstone on the outside of that church. Man. I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm, being, I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. You got to be committed not to the brick, brick and mortar. That's right. Not mm -hmm. to tradition. But to Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and the yeah. word of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That, that's right. And you are, what you said was right. I want to bring that point out. Now, if I was a male chauvinist, I wouldn't ask that question. But you said that's true. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? Uh, Deacon, hi, you have to read for me. The closing thought. Uh, yeah, closing thought, sir. Okay. Everyone has some type of calling from God. One of which is that of being a witness for Him. Our loyalty and commitment to Jesus are often challenged in different times, such as the loss of a loved one. Sometimes, God allows dramatic change and completely. We direct our focus on such on service for him. Our challenge is to remain loyal and faithful through those times, knowing that God is in control. Amen. 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 Consider your loyalty to Christ. In what areas can you provide devotion, witness, service, obedience, and giving? Examine yourself and make plans to improve your world. This week, invite someone else to actively participate in a ministry active activity with you. Mm. Closing. Lord, help us grow stronger and wiser. As we grow, we pray for commitment to stay faithful and loyal to you. Help us not to Pray from your commands and to remain focused and committed, even though, even through storms and difficult days. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 And, and before we close, I just want to share this with you that we were talking about Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene didn't start showing loyalty when Jesus was in the tomb. All right. Right. Mary Magdalene showed loyalty. Do y'all remember when she was, took her hair and a tear? Yes, yes Lord. Yes. So loyalty back then. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think we we don't we don't we shouldn't just try to show loyalty to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when everything is okay. Mm -hmm. When it's sunshine, but we need to show loyalty when it's raining, when it's storming, when it's sunshine. All the time. All the time. Right. Not just sometimes. And last word, last few words. We're talking about saying something about a microwave. Sometimes we got a microwave religion. Yes, sir. We can't serve, completely serve God with a microwave religion. Really? That's all right. right. That's all. That, that's all. Good lesson. Good lesson. It so is. next Sunday, if it's the Lord's will, I want y'all to tune back, tune in again. 
And the subject gonna be risk taker. Risk taker. Now what we're gonna talk about on next time, if it's the Lord will. Y'all stay blessed, and we'll see y'all at eleven fifteen live on Facebook. Reverend Gilbert Staples, the pastor of the First Baptist Church, five forty nine Ryder Street, eleven fifteen. Let us listen to the word of God. Thank you. Bye. Bye.